Hi guys, my name is Doug. Today we're going to be talking about rust repair around your windshield. Today we'll be focusing on the flange at the bottom of the windshield, this area where the lower part of the, the A-pillar meets the apron panel, as well as the inside of the A-pillar. Today's video is part three of the series to restore the 66 Mustang convertible called VIN. If you haven't watched the other episodes, I'd suggest that you do that. Those give you the, the walk around on the car and also a lot of uh, detail about the removal of the cowl. Thanks for watching. rust in kind of three different areas on the windshield that needed some attention. One of them was on the flange that was across the front of it that the cowl attaches to um, and spot welds to. Some of it was in this lower area of the A-pillar kind of at the bottom of the windshield where it transitions into the cowl pan, the cowl side panel. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, some major rust repair I had to do in this area. And the third one is kind of on the A-pillar itself. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more details, but particularly on the inside, uh, kind of where if you were sitting in the driver's seat, you'd be looking at the inside bottom of the A-pillar. And I use different strategies for each of those. And I'll talk about what worked well and what didn't. The other thing that would be good for you to know is I'm um, filming this video after a lot of the work is done. Uh, I decided to start a YouTube channel. Originally, I was just posting some pictures on Instagram. So I'm gonna be showing some still photos during this, showing you what I did, some pictures of it during it and how it ended up. Uh, some of those pictures are good. Some are a little hard to figure out. The, the light reflects off the, the freshly sanded metal. Um, but that's why I did that. And I'm gonna be trying to do some voiceover descriptions on the still pictures. So hey, I get to try something new today as well. Let's talk first about this repair flange. So the, the flange at the bottom of my windshield was overall in really good shape. Uh, last episode, we talked about removing the spot welds at the base of the windshield. And these are the ones I feel really good about how they came out. You can see where the spot weld was, but very little material from this under layer of metal was removed. and. And I feel like that this was in good shape and it's still nice and strong and that feels great. Where I started getting into more troubles toward this end of the windshield and you see that this has had some repairs to it. Uh, this is the, the brace or the bracket or the frame that the steering attaches to. And as it comes up, it wraps around over the top and spot welded to this bracket at the bottom of the windshield. Same thing over here. This one is kind of how it was supposed to look. Uh, there's a spot weld there, there's a spot weld there and here, and you can see the bracket around it. This side had rusted out quite a bit, and uh, I don't think I did quite as good of a job at removing that, so I needed some repair in this area. Then basically this way on up till about here is where I had to do a lot of repairs. You can see a little bit right here, there's a piece that I patched in. And there's another piece that I had patched in here, basically cutting it out and removing it, then welding a new in, grinding it down so overall it's fairly smooth and solid again. Uh, so this was not a difficult repair to do, um, and I felt like it came out pretty well. Tried to follow the same arc of the windshield originally. When I get to the base of the A-pillar here, and on the inside of the A-pillar, that's where things got a little bit more tricky and I had a couple different options to pursue. When you get to the point of having some more significant rust repair, you've got a couple different options as to how you wanna attack it. The first one, if the hole through, the rust through isn't too significant, you can try to weld the hole shut, fill the hole with weld, clean it up, try to repair it that way. I tried a whole bunch of that, learned some things along the way, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. Your second option is to cut out the rust and then custom fabricate a patch panel to put in there. That can be a great option, depending on the geometry of the piece. Your third option is to buy a replacement panel that's custom fit for it, cut it out, weld the new one in. 
This is a patch panel for dash repair of the radio opening. And my, somebody cut out my dash to put a modern radio in. I'd like to return it to stock. So incredibly affordably, I think this was like 10, 15 bucks. Uh, you can buy a piece that stock, cut out your old hole in the dash, weld this in, blend it, and uh, you'll never know the difference. And you've got a piece that looks stock. I'm not sure I would be able to very easily replicate this shape. So sometimes it's best to just, you know, buy a piece and, and weld it in. So this area on my lower A pillar was really pretty solid from about here on up. From here on down, some sloppy previous repairs have been done by a previous owner and a bunch of Bondo was slathered in there. And once I ground it out, did a little sandblasting, I realized that this stretch from here, kind of going all the way back up to about here was not solid. So what I ended up doing was cut, basically cutting it out. And uh, I will show some still photos now of what that looked like. And then weld it in one chunk, two chunk, and three chunks. So this is what it looked like before I started welding uh, the replacement patch panels in. Right by the tip of my finger, you can see how there's an open gap between the windshield frame and that tab sticking out to the left. And to the right, you'll start to see where the patch panels fit in. Now you can see I've got the rear patch panel completed so that lower bracket holding the screw of which you can see sticking out there should be well supported. I'm not sure what that's for, but maybe somebody can tell me in the comments. Now I'm going to start on the slot to the right. So I cut a small piece of sheet metal to fit in the slot. So it fit pretty snugly, but there was a small gap around the edges. Then began tack welding it in place. And yeah, I'll be honest, those welds aren't real pretty. Uh, but it was also the start of my learning curve. And we all start somewhere. I also had not yet learned that I could go to a thinner wire on my welder. And, and I learned to sum on the way. This also ground up pretty clean, as you can see in the next picture. Um, and then I'll show you how I moved on to the third patch. Here's what it looks like cleaned up. Not too bad. Uh, time to keep moving. Here's the third and final picture. And you can see uh, I added the third final patch. I, I didn't show that getting welded in. I forgot to take that pick. Uh, but all the pieces are in, ground back together. Uh, I have yet to fit my new cowl in there to see how it all fits together. Hopefully it seats right. If not, I'll have to remodify it again. But uh, overall, pretty happy with the results. And I think it's all pretty solid and strong, which I think is the, the majority of my concern. Uh, now, this isn't perfectly smooth. Um, I need to do a little bit more work to this if any of this will be visible in the end. Um, my impression is that this will be covered by the windshield, by the cowl, and and I and I uh, I think a bunch of this will be covered by the trim around the windshield. So I'm not going to do too much more repair work to that. So you can see the finished product, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about how that came out. It's not perfectly smooth. It was also one of the first jobs I started on, and I encourage if you're doing rust repair like this to just take your time, get finicky with it. Uh, even if nobody ever sees this, uh, it's a great place to practice making sure you end up with a product when you're done that's strong and solid and, and you feel good about it. I ended up doing a little extra replacement down here. I'm not positive how this originally was, but this piece right here was kind of hanging in the wind and I wanted to, to make it more solid, so I welded in a patch panel there too. Uh, let's swing around to the inside of the A-pillar. Uh, I'd like to talk about how that repair went. So on my driver's side, uh, this repair needed a bunch of work. A previous owner had done some of the work, and as I ground the Bondo out, I began to see where there were holes and uh, where pieces needed to be replaced. I don't know, and maybe somebody can chime in if there are better ways to do this. There may have been a patch panel available that I could have cut this out and welded it in, but it's quite a complicated contour. Uh, so I did my best to fill the holes with weld uh, where there was some, 
um, down fairly far into the corner. Now I'm not completely worried about how this looks because there is a black piece of windshield trim that will go right in there uh, and cover the majority of that. I had a similar scenario on this side and I have some better pictures of that. Um, this had no repairs done by the previous owner, but right in this area, there were a half dozen pinhole welds, just like you can see there are some in the very front right there. Um, sorry, it's not the best picture in the world. Um, what I ended up doing uh, was welding these pinholes shut. Um, that took some practice and some learning, um, and I'd, I'd like to draw you some pictures of, of what I learned along the way. One of the first things I learned along the way is you need to get to know your welder and you need to get to know how to dial it in to do thin metal sheet metal welding. Uh, I've got a Lincoln Electric Weld Pack 100, bought it about 20 years ago. It's very simple, four settings for uh, the amperage and then one dial for the wire speed. I've learned for me that uh, I need to have, if I'm doing thin metal welding, I need to have it on the lowest amperage setting. And I'm probably gonna be in the two and a half to three and a half wire speed area. And you'll play with that as you go. It's important to practice. Um, get a thin piece of metal, try to figure out how much heat can you add to it before it blows through. Uh, practice not adding too much heat and, and it will go a lot better. Couple other thoughts about welders. Mine is a uh, flux core welder. I do not have a gas attachment for it for gas shield welding. That's probably better. I will probably get lots of comments from people that say you really should have gas flux welding. Flux core works. I don't think it's as easy. I don't think it's as nice, uh, but it's what I have for right now. And uh, I will continue to do that until I get a chance to upgrade someday. Um, mine came stock with uh, 035 flux core wire. I was able to buy a spool of 030 flux core wire, which is a little bit smaller. That ended up helping a lot. So I would encourage you if you've got flux core wire in a, a flux core welder, to switch to, to 030 wire. That little thinner wire um, adds a little bit less heat and things work a little bit better. If you are able to step to gas shielding, you're able to go to an even thinner diameter wire as well, which makes it a bit easier. Hi, welcome back. I'm at the workbench. I've got a, a piece of sheet metal here that I'm gonna use as a dry erase board so I can try to show a, a visual picture of what I'm trying to communicate. Um, this, I want to communicate one of the challenges of welding shut a pinhole in your sheet metal. So imagine this is your piece of sheet metal and it's 18 gauge or, or 22 gauge or whatever it is. So it's, it's zoomed in here. Obviously, it's not an inch thick. Uh, but now imagine that uh, this starts rusting and, uh, and it rusts to the point where you get a little bit of a pinhole right there. Now, it looks like you've only got one small hole, but actually it, it is, you know, the sheet metal has thinned out here quite a bit. Um, what I first tried to do is, you know, put my welding gun there. That's a beautiful picture of a welding gun. Um, and just kind of aim the wire right at the middle. And I'm like, I'm going to just zap it real short and I'm going to try to fill this spot right here. What ended up happening is the, the wire comes out, it contacts, um, here's where your spark is, and this area here all takes all of the heat, and all of this just blows through, and now my hole is this big, and it's like, oh my goodness, how am I going to fill that? Um, what I learned works better is if we go back to this... Um, here's my rusted out area, is if I actually start welding out here, and I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna hit it with my wire speed a little bit lower on my lowest amperage setting, and I'm gonna just zap it a little bit and put a little bit of weld right here, 
and fill this in and build it up a little bit. And I'm going to go all the way around the circle of the hole, building it up kind of like a donut. So if this is now looking down, here's my rust hole. Um, here's the area. Okay, it's probably not in actuality that big, but maybe in actuality about that big, half inch to three quarters of an inch around. I'm going to start welding around the outside of it to build it up. Um, that will allow me to build up some mass where my sheet metal is still fairly strong. That mass, when I weld then, that mass of metal will help absorb the heat so it doesn't overheat too fast and just blow out the bottom. And eventually then I can fill this in all the way to the middle. And then I've welded my pinhole shut. And then I grind it smooth. So what happens, if we go back up to this picture, is... I start building up my weld here on the outside. I build up some here uh, and I keep working my way around the side and I work over here. Once it gets hot, I let it cool. You get good at watching the orange glow as you stop welding in your welding helmet and you can kind of get used to, you know, when the orange is almost gone, you can hit it with a little bit more weld. And pretty soon I've built up my weld like this. So my pinhole is welded shut. I've also filled this spot in down here. Um, and then I can come back through with my grinder and smooth that out and uh, remove that, leaving me with just a repaired piece. I found that worked fairly well. What I found I need to be careful of is when I'm grinding this down to not obviously not go too far here, but also to be careful that I'm not taking metal off on the sides here. I've had a couple times where you know, I had a little, you know, air pocket or pinhole here. Sorry about that. Or pinhole over here. So I ended up grinding down and I ended up thinning out my original untouched metal too much, which gave me more repairs. Um, so using the right metal or the right wire, the right settings on your welder, cleaning it up really well, and then carefully working from the outside in, I found really helped. Now... If you have, you know, sheet metal here and it's just riddled with pinholes and the whole thing is thin, you're never going to be able to weld that back up again. Um, you, you really need, this works if you have a, a small pinhole that's not in a severely rusted out area. I'm going to show you another picture, a still that I took on this side, but one of the things that I did here before I repaired this is I had five, four or five pinholes. As I had four or five pinholes that where there was rust and I didn't know it's the whole thing thin underneath it. It didn't look like there was a lot of rust. I had tried one earlier in a different spot. When I welded it, it just blew through it made me realize while the metal was a lot thinner than I originally thought. So I wanted to make sure that it was fairly solid around the pinholes. So I took a prick punch, um, which just has a, a cone shape end to it, and uh, actually tapped on the pinhole with a hammer and the prick punch. And the prick punch kind of pushed the pinhole in. And I tapped on it medium hard enough till the, the prick punch stopped going in. So I knew that it had kind of wedged itself in there and pounded itself in and chamfered the hole until it really couldn't go in any further because it had hit kind of solid metal. This did two things. One is it let me know how far out did I have solid metal and then I could start welding in a circle around that. The second thing it did is it gave me a little bit of a chamfer so I could fill that weld in uh, or fill that chamfer in with weld so that I knew I ended up with a solid kind of surface there instead. Uh, and I'll show you some stills now as to what that looked like and, and how it ended up. What I have remaining yet to figure out with this is, um, I don't know how visible this part of the lower A pillar is. I also have a lot of learning to do with body filler. My final sanding surface of the, or my, my final sanding of that repair is pretty rough and gritty yet. 
Um, so I'll have to figure out how can I smooth that in so when you're riding in the front seat, looking out the windshield, your eye doesn't catch this part of the repair and go, oh, that doesn't look quite right. That's all rough and bumpy there. Um, so that's the work I've done. Um, I did repair on the far side uh, of the lower windshield. Also did some on this part of the windshield. You can see that this has been repaired and blended in as well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is an area of the car that I'm not as knowledgeable of the repair in, so it's a pretty steep learning curve for me. I'm excited to hear uh, from any comments of things that you've done, you know, what have I said that aligned with what you've learned and uh, what other things have you learned along the way that you can share with me and the other viewers as well. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Hit the notification bell and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Have a great day.